Thank you for joining us for our reflection on a lesson from the Daily Office Lectionary. My name is Mother Elizabeth Papa Zaglakis, and I serve as Associate Rector at St. George's Episcopal Church in Clifton Park, New York. Today is Monday of the third week in Lent. Let us pray. Almighty God, you know that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our lesson is from Paul's letter to the Romans, the fourth chapter, beginning at the first verse. What then are we to say was gained by Abraham, our ancestor, according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now to one who works, Wages are not reckoned as a gift, but as something due. But to one who without works trusts him who justifies the ungodly, such faith is reckoned as righteousness. So also David speaks of the blessedness of those to whom God reckons righteousness apart from works. Blessed are those whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are for covered. Blessed is the one against whom the Lord will not reckon sin. Is this blessedness then pronounced only on the circumcised or also on the uncircumcised? We say, faith was reckoned to Abraham as righteousness. How then was it reckoned to him? Was it before or after he had been circumcised? It was not after, but before he was circumcised. He received the sign of circumcision as a seal of the righteousness that he had by faith while he was still uncircumcised. The purpose was to make him the ancestor of all who believe without being circumcised and who thus have righteousness reckoned to them. And likewise, the ancestor of the circumcised who are not only circumcised, but who also follow the example of the faith that our ancestor Abraham had before he was circumcised. Here ends the lesson. Abraham is the great patriarch of the Jewish people. He is also the true example of a person justified before God. Based on this understanding, Jews at the time of Jesus held up Abraham as an example of one justified by works. Paul challenged that claim by pointing to Abraham as an example of righteousness by faith. There were no obvious laws of God about which Abraham would have known. So he could not have been justified or deemed righteous by the law. He had not knowingly lived a life of service to God or had any great works of service by which he could have earned him God's favor. He was unaware of or proficient in performing any religious ritual that he might have thought would earn him God's favor. Abraham's belief in God and his trust in God's promises were credited to him as righteousness. Abraham trusted God and had faith in him. It was his faith, it was his faith that was credited to him as righteousness. Abraham was declared righteous 14 years before he was circumcised. Circumcision became an outward and visible sign of the righteousness that God had credited to Abraham for his faith. The fact that righteousness was from faith rather than circumcision confirms that Abraham was intended to be the earthly father or ancestor of the people of Israel and Gentiles of faith in God and now Jesus Christ as Lord and Messiah. Through this intricate argument, Paul made clear his understanding that sinful humanity, both Jew and Gentile, are saved as a result of grace. 
through faith. Let us pray. Most loving Father, whose will it is for us to give thanks for all things, to fear nothing but the loss of you, and to cast all our care on you who care for us. Preserve us from faithless fears and worldly anxieties, that no clouds of this mortal life may hide from us the light of that love which is immortal, and which you have manifested to us in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Join us every weekday for our reflection. If you live in the Clifton Park area, join us for worship at 4.30 on Saturdays or 8 or 9.30 on Sunday mornings. If you're unable to join us in person, join us virtually through our YouTube channel. Our webpage provides recordings and details about all of our offerings.